Welcome to Gamerability. I'm your host Sixpenny and in today's video I'm going to provide full whole tutorials on PGA Tour 2K21. So I've made two putting tutorials to date. So if you have not watched my putting tutorial videos I highly recommend that you watch those videos so that you can start to learn my systematic approach and to help improve your gamer ability with putting. This video will include a tutorial on all of the shots on a hole, including the drive, iron shots, wedges, chips, and putts. Also, how to judge the wind, how much roll, how, how far is the ball gonna roll, and how to play from the rough and how to hit percentage shots. I believe this video will be helpful for players of all skill levels, but especially helpful to beginners. If you have not hit that subscribe button on the channel, be sure you hit that button so that you can stay up to date on all my new videos. Stay tuned and enjoy. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into the tutorial round. So we're, I'm going to jump into TPC River Highlands. This course is rated as an easy difficulty level. It's medium fast greens and we're going to be playing at on medium wind speeds and I'm going to that way I can there's some wind and I can show you how I play the wind. So let's go ahead and jump into the round. Now the same systematic approach I Hello use there. with putting is John. Looking forward to, to where I use the click system, I use that Let's system to, to the judge the wind as well. So based on how many so miles per hour the wind is, that, I times that by a specific number, and that's how where I need to aim. So when you approach the tee, the first thing I recommend, even before you start aiming, on the first tee is to go into practice swing, just to get the tempo down. If you did not hit the practice range before, you re I would really highly recommend you get in a practice swing, especially when you're in a practice round like the one we're doing today. So I'm going to go ahead and hit a few practice swings here, just trying to get my tempo down, trying to hit the ball straight. Now when I do these practice swings, I'm actually watching my thumb move. Because I want to, when I watch my thumb move, I'm able to hit it straighter. So I do that in practice swings. So start out with about five practice swings here. So I was fast, slow. That's why it's important to do them. Okay. Uh, still not where I want to be. Slow. So I'm going to try to get a perfect before I move in to determine where the shot is. Okay. That was pretty good. We'll stick with that for now. So let's go into the shot. So the first thing I do, I hit Y. And I look at the fairway. So if we look at the first hole here at TPC River Highlands, this is a tough fairway. We have to make a decision. Are we going to hit the three wood? Or are we going to risk it and hit the driver? The driver I'm using carries 291. And it's going to roll out probably about 15 yards or so. What you need to take into account here is the elevation change. So if you look it, in the middle of the screen there, it says if I hit the driver, it's going to be 291. And you see a downhill arrow and 43 feet. That means that this shot is 43 inches downhill. So what does that mean? That mean in, in, in general, what I do with these numbers, I divide that number by 3. So as far as down, so get your calculator out, 43 divided by 3 is 14. If it's downhill, that means that my ball is going to carry 14 around 14 yards further. So I'm going to risk it on this shot. You have an opportunity. So I'm going to try to hit it as straight as I can. Look at the slope of the fairway. If I hit the fairway on this right side, it's likely going to bounce forward and make its way to the left. It's not going to bounce right into the rough, but it does have a chance to bounce left and roll into the sand or end up in the rough. So I want to determine where I want to land it. So I want to. if I aim here, it's going to land about 14 yards further 
and hit the fairway slope and kick left. So that's what I'm going to aim for. Now let's look at the wind. So we looked at the distance, we looked at elevation, found out where we're going to hit it. What's the wind affecting? Now on a tailwind like this, it's basically a straight tailwind. The calculation that I, I use is I multiply that number times 0.8. So we'll get your calculator out, 9 times 0.8, 7.2. So it's going to add 7.2. So total, the elevation is going to add 14 yards to the shot. The wind is going to add about 7 yards. That's going to be about 21 yards further. So my ball will carry around 311 or 312 yards. So let's test it out. That's as long as I do a perfect swing. So go into practice swing. Let's hit the shot now. That felt good. That's what we want right there. So we did a fast follow through. We won't know completely. Uh, not sure where this one's going to end up. So that rough. shows, you know, the setup is very important, but the execution is vital. You can set up the okay, shot we're in the deep rough in the perfect Careful. spot, but if you don't get the tempo down, but that's going to happen. If you've watched my other videos, you know already that I am not the best driver. I am not the most accurate driver. Driver. I can make hit recovery shots, which is what we're doing right now. This is a good learning example. So let's look at this hole. The first thing I want to look at is where I need to land the ball. So from the rough, you're not going to generate as much spin. Now, in this example, we need to figure out how much the rough is going to affect the ball, how much the elevation change is going to affect the ball, and the wind and before we determine what distance we need to hit it. And the reason for this being, we don't know how the, the spin is going to affect in the heavy rough here. But as an eyeball, I do think I want to land it about 90, around 92 here. If I land it there... We're not going to generate a lot of spin out of the rough. It should roll about five to six yards, and we'll be almost right on the hole, maybe a little bit past. So we pick our spot. Let's just pick 92 for now. But let's take a look at the other elements. First thing in this situation, I always look at elevation first. So 15 divided by 3 is 5. So that means if I hit 92, for example... Or let's just do where this hole is. If I hit 97 yards uphill, it's going to play as 97 minus 5. So it's going to play as 92. Next thing we need to look at is the rough. In order to do this, you need to look at the club that you're hitting. So let's look at the sand wedge. The sand wedge is supposed to carry 96 yards. In this, carry, in this case, we know that it's going to carry 92, but we're not going to look at that yet. So get out your calculator. Look at the lie in the top right corner. It's a 77% to 84% lie. So you know it's going to be somewhere around there. The lie is going to be a little bit worse if your shot's a little more to the left than the right and it's out of the swing plane. It's going to be better if it's dead straight. So if it's dead straight, you're most likely going to get that 84% lie. So let's take set, let's take 96 times 0.84. So to turn that into percentage, all you do is put a decimal in front of it in the calculator and then multiply it by the shot, by the yards. That gives you 80. So if I hit this club, not taking into account the elevation changes, this club's only going to carry 80. So I know that's not enough. So eat, that's going to be 80. What about the next club? So let's go up a club. 108. So the gap wedge is going to carry. Let's get our calculators. You'll get better at this to where you won't need a calculator, but when you're learning this, use a calculator. So 108 times 0 0.83, it's going to be 89. So that's going to carry around 89. Now, 
if that's going to carry 89, let's go ahead and take off five more yards due to the 15 feet uphill. So it's going to really carry 84. But what's the wind going to do to it? So on a tailwind, especially a cross tailwind like this, it's going to carry around seven. So it's going to carry around 75%. Or, no, I'm, I apologize. I, it's going to carry around 50%. So if that's 9 miles per hour, it's going to carry about 50% more. And what that means is, so each miles per hour adds a yard, is how I think of it. Okay, or a percentage. Think of the percentage. So if it's a 10 miles per hour, if I multiply that by 0.5, that gives me 5. So that means five yards are going to be added to my shot so if we're sitting at 84 right now the wind's going to add five miles we'll be hitting around 89 if i hit at 89 that's taking into account the rough that's taking into account the wind and that's taking into account the elevation changes so let's take a look at this if it lands at 89 where's that going to be so it's going to hit right here. Look at the green. So the green is sloped down. That means it's going uphill. Is that going to carry enough? I don't think it will. But I don't think it's worth going up to the next club. I don't think it's worth going up to the pitching wedge. I think it's worth hitting a full 108 and actually using the shot shaping feature. So to do this, that's going to add a little bit more row. So I'm going to hold down LB, go up on the left stick here, add a few yards. So that added about six yards. I don't think I need to do that. I'm just going to add about three yards to it. The next step is to determine how the wind is, where you want to land the ball on the green. So if we land it at 89, that'd be about right here. How's the green sloping? So the green is actually sloping to the right. So we want to land a little bit to the left of the hole here. Now, when you're looking at this, always make sure you go back to where you wanted to hit it. So I wanted to hit it 111. The next step is to determine how many clicks you need to aim in order to hit that spot on the green. When it's a crosswind like this, in general, it's going to be about 1.25 to 1.5 clicks that you need to aim to the right. So how you so if this is 10 miles per hour, I'm going to multiply 10 miles per hour times 1.25. That gives me 12.5. That means I need to aim 12 and a half clicks to the right in order to land there. So let's do that now. A click in this is different than putting. In putting, you're just lightly moving the stick. In this example, you're actually moving the stick slightly. You're just flicking it to the right really quickly or to the left. Okay, so we move that. Now that's not all. I know this, this is a lot you have to think about. I know it's a lot, but you're going to learn. You're going to learn this game. You're going to learn how to adjust for each shot on the fly to where you don't have to do use all these calculations. You're going to have a better feel for it. But when you're starting out, you need to learn. You're going to need to go through these steps. Next step, look at where the ball is in relation to my feet. So remember, in golf, if your feet are below the ball, when you swing, your ball is going to come off to the left. If your feet are above the ball, the ball is going to push to the right, no matter what. So that's the next step. Now, I don't have, it's, it's difficult. We don't know the degrees of this. So it's hard to get an exact calculation. This is by fill. In this case, in this case, if you look, it's pretty significant. If it's pretty significant, my rule of thumb in this case, I would move 10 extra clicks to the right. So let's go ahead and do that. 
Okay, so we aim 10 extra clicks to the right. We have our aim. Now it's execution time. So let's go into the practice swing. See if we can... Because this shot, all those calculations mean nothing if I don't hit it right. So that's a perfect swing. Can we do that again? Okay, perfect swing twice. Let's go ahead and hit the shot. Oh, forgot to get out of practice swing. Okay, so perfect swing. Let's see how we did. We did come up a little bit short. So it carried about 86. That's so that means work. I hit it instead of the 84% of the rush. It was a little bit more. Right, but still, that's a really good shot. If I would have done all that math, there's no telling where that ball would have landed. So let's go ahead and take a look at this putt. So we're on the green now. If you have not watched my putting videos, I highly recommend you watch them. But let's, let me go through the four steps of putting. Number one, determine how hard you, you need to hit it. Number two, determine what number to assign each grid line to determine where you need to aim. Number three is to actually practice your shot with either a practice swing or by moving the stick back and then letting up. You want to aim right at the right in the middle or to the start of the white bar. The last step is to hit the ball. So let's go through the steps on this putt. This putt is eight feet long, one inch uphill. So I need to hit it at least nine feet. So it's 1.25. So 1.25 times how many inches it is uphill, that's how many feet you need to increase it by. Downhill is still 1.25, but it's how many feet you need to aim less. In this case, 1.25 times 1 is about 9 and a little bit. On these short putts, I like to little, hit it a little hard to really make sure I take some break off and get there. So I know I'm going to aim 10 feet. So let's take a look at each grid mark. Okay, So I'm going to move the right stick back, take a look at the first one. There's quite a bit of break at the beginning. I'm going to label the first one as 6. The second one I'm going to label a 2. That's 8 total. This next one I'm going to label a 1. That's 9. And the cup really doesn't look like it's breaking very much. It's in the middle. So sticking to a 9. Let's make sure we get our distance back to 10 where we had it right there. So that means I need to make 9 clicks to the left. So always do the eyeball test after you do that. I like to do the eyeball to make sure it looks right to see if I need to make any corrections. I think it looks right. Let's go ahead and hit the putt and see. This putt's going. And we made it. We slide that Good first hole. We started the hole with the birdie. I know it may be overwhelming. You hearing all these already. numbers, getting out calculators. It's going to get job. easier, going and I'm going right to go through the whole round with one. you. So let's take a look at this drive here. So this is a 344-yard par 4. That's 44 feet uphill. So with 291, do you remember the calculation? So you divide 44. So 44 divided by 3 is 14. So you subtract that from 291 because that's how it's going to take off 14 yards. So 291 minus 14 is 277. So that driver is going to carry around 277. So let's take a look at 277. So here's 277. Where do we want to land this? The whole fairway is sloped to the left. So ideally, we would want to land towards the right side. But before we pick that spot, how's the wind going to affect it? So again, this is a cross tailwind. So if you remember my numbers from the beginning, we're going to multiply that by 0.8. So we, that's an easy math, so that's 8. So it's going to add 8 yards to the shot. So 277 plus 8 is around 285. So it's going to carry around 285 if we hit it perfect. Now if we do a fast follow through, which sometimes I would do in this situation, because I want to carry the green. But let's just hit it for now. So always remember, I was just show, moving around to show you. Move it back to your original spot check the aim so now let's determine where we need to hit it based on where do we need to aim based on wh where the winds gonna move the ball in regards to left or right so this is a crosswind now with a with a crosswind it's gonna be about 1.25 or between 1.25 and 1.5 
if it's let, so see how this one, it's basically st straight diagonal. If it was a little more towards the side to the left, more towards the middle, I would give it a 1.5. In this case, where it's more closer to the top, I'm going to give it a 1.25. So we're going to take 11 times 1.25. We need to aim 13 0.75, so basically 14 clicks to the right in order to hit the ball where I have it aimed here. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we're there. Now, practice swing. Now, keep in mind, I don't do a practice swing in every shot, uh, especially in matchmaking because some people get frustrated. But in practice rounds, when I'm trying to tune in, and dial up, dial in my game and my swing. I'm gonna do a practice swing every time. So I'm a little slow there, so I need to speed it up a little bit. Still a little slow. Now practice, do it until you get a perfect. It may take a while. So let's go ahead and hit the shot. Let's see how our math was and how we did. So perfect swing. Drives looking good. 285 is what it carried. Very close, very close to the number I said. And what a bounce. Second shot here on hole number two. All right, so let's take a look at this next shot. It defaults to a pitch almost every time. I do not believe doing a percentage pitch is the easiest option here. Now, you see how the percentage is moving here. If you're playing in matchmaking, it's not going to show up that way. So in settings, how I play, when I'm doing the tutorial now, I'm having the power bar so you can actually see the numbers and where I'm hitting it. When I actually play my rounds, I turn the power bar off. I think it messes up my, my precision and my focus. So I turn swing timing on. I turn the, the distance control assist off. This is the big one. If you turn this off, you'll have... You really the the percentage shots feel a little bit more realistic. If you turn it on the distance control assist, you're basically going to be hitting in the 90 some percent each time based on where you aim. So if you're confused seeing how I'm doing this, that's the reason it's different. If you have distance control assist turned on, then you need to move your cursor wherever you want to hit the ball based now based on the calculations. So if I'm aiming here, this is a different case. Um, but if I'm aiming 30, 50, and I think the wind's going to affect it 10 or 12 yards, it's not in this example. But you would need to aim in a spot to compensate for the wind. But let's get back to the shot here. What I like to do in this situation, I don't necessarily like a flop in this situation. I don't like a pitch. I like to actually splash it. So in this case, I would hit the 30 yard pitching wedge splash. If you look, let's look at where it's landing. So it's landing at a downhill line. That's gonna give it a little more row. And the green is breaking a lot to the left. So I already know I need to aim right of the hole. But how much is this gonna row? My prediction is that it's going to roll around five or six yards. So it's going to land, it's going to take us to around the 36 mark here. So I want to add a little bit more to it. So I'm going to use LB, use the left stick, and move it up to put a little elevate, to hit down on the ball a little bit. So that should add a little bit more spin. The wind is going to affect this just a little bit, really not much. It may add a few, just a yard or maybe just a yard, not a big difference. So I want to hit, land it there. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at my stance. So my feet are below the ball. So I need to aim a little bit more to the right. In this case, just a few clicks, three or four. Maybe not even that much. I'm going to back it off. So let's do a practice swing. Slow. 
Now, remember, when you're practice swinging, if you want to look at your thumb, that, that'll help you hit it straighter. I know you won't be able to focus on the percentage, but you'll get a feel of it, and you'll be able to look at your thumbstick, or not even have to look at your thumbstick. So let's hit the shot. Let's see how we did. Fast follow through. It carried 131, so calculations were on. That fast follow through generated a little bit just about more six speed feet. than we wanted, and it rolled out more. I think it would have been perfect if we wouldn't have done that. Okay, so this putt is six feet downhill one inch. So I would need to aim at least five. But in this case, I want to, I want to make sure I get it there. So I'm actually going to aim right at six. And let's take a look at the grid lines. So the first grid line and first slope, I'm going to assign that a five. The next one is a little bit faster. I'm going to assign that a seven. So that's going to be 12. And the cup is sitting in the middle, so I'm going to add an extra two. That's 14. Let's go ahead and aim 14 clicks to the left. So always do the eye test. Hit Y. Let's take a look. Does this look? Did I read it right? I think it looks right as long as I get the distance. So then step three, practice. You'll see me not practicing sometimes because I feel pretty confident with putting. Looking pretty good. And we did it. Ooh, that drops and that's two birdies in a row. Birdie in a row. I know it seems like a lot of information to take right in, but if you want to just play through this round with me, nice get on this course, on this try so to go through the numbers with me, hit the pause button and see what I'm doing, and then play through, hit the shot. That'll be a good way to practice. So we're on the next hole. So this shot, if I hit the driver, it'll carry 291 without any wind or elevation changes. So the first step is elevation changes. So 11 divided by 3 is basically 4. So instead of 291, it's going to land 287. So 287, next step is the wind. So remember, on a crosswind like this, it is going to carry, so you times that number by 0.8, and that's how many yards it's going to carry. So 12 times 0.8 is going to give you 11. So it's going to carry about 11 more yards, between 10 and 11. So if we take a look at this, we were at 287. It's going to carry, since it's downhill, it's going to, I mean, since the wind... So I did, I did a wrong calculation there. It's a downhill lie. So we need to add four yards instead of subtract from 291. So that's going to be 295 is what it's going to carry with regards to elevation. Now add the wind, that's 11 more yards, around 11. So that's going to carry about 306 total. But where do we need to hit it? So we know it's going to carry 306, which is going to be kind of right at if we get our cat one thing you can do hit B get the caddy book out and let's keep see where it's gonna carry so 291 plus 15 three around 306 here so it's gonna land about right there so we're clear from the bunker as long as we aim towards the right side of the fairway mid right here so that's where I'm gonna aim Let's get into our practice swing. A little slow. I've been pretty pretty slow on these. And then fast. So I think I can find the in-between spot. Let's go ahead and hit it. Oh, I forgot to adjust for the wind. So look at the wind. It's it's basically straight up. It's not going to affect it very much. It's still going to affect it about half. So I need to aim about six, five, five to six clicks. I'm going to do five. And now we're ready to hit it. Fast follow through. But I still think we're going to hit the fairway. Let's see how much it carried. So 311 with the fast follow through. So I think we were right on that it would have carried about 306. That was a good one. And we got about a 24-yard roll on that one. I mean, yeah. Yeah, that was right. 
All right, so let's take a look at this next shot. So it's not really downhill. We don't really have to account for any downhill up here because it's just one foot. But we do have to account for the wind. If I carry it, if this hole, if I carry this club 96, which is what it carries, with this wind, this is a straight tailwind. Now, on a straight tailwind, it's actually going to add about 50%. So you're going to multiply. Sometimes it's a little bit more. Um, but in general, I've found that it's about 50%. So 13 times 0.5. It's 6.5. So it's going to add about 6.5 yards. So if we hit this club, it's going to carry about 103. Now, if I hit it 103, is that going to be the right club? No, it's not. So let's go back and determine where we need to hit it. So I want to land it. The wind is going to keep the spin down a little bit. But I want to land it actually right at 92 here. If I land it right at 92, it should skip right up close to the hole. Now, in order to land it at 92, I need to account for the wind. So I'm going to take 92 minus what we found. So it's about 7 yards. So 92 minus 7 is about 85. So in this case, the lob wedge carries 83. I may have to do, you can either do a percentage shot here, about 82% which I think is actually harder than going down to the lob wedge and doing a little bit of shot shaping. So LB move, in my case, I swing with the left stick. So if you swing with the left stick, you're going to move the left stick up. So I'm going to move the left stick up to about 87. I mean, just about to the 85 mark here, or 84, to add a little bit of distance. So let's go ahead and practice swing. Okay, perfect. Now, the wind is a crosswind. If you see its base, it's barely a crosswind. It's pointing a little bit to the left. So I do need to aim a few clicks. I'm gonna aim about five. And then look at where the feet are in relation to the ball. The feet are below the ball. So I need to aim about, in this case, about four or five clicks. Okay, so we're there. Let's go ahead and hit the shot and see how we did. Oh, I was in a practice swing. Slow follow through. So we, did, we can't Come really on, determine left. if we were right there. And that's going to happen. Approach shot worked out just fine. Okay, this one's 19 All right, so let's take a look at this putt. 19 feet, downhill one inch. So I need to aim at least 18. Remember, I like to hit these. Um, I'm going to aim right at 18 here. The first, let's go ahead back. Let's look at the grid line. So the first one, not really moving. The second one is two, and then with three, four, five, six, a one, seven, a one, eight, and then another one, nine at the cup. I need to name nine clicks to the left. Let's do a practice. Okay, I believe I have the distance. I hit it a little hard. Oh, Let's see on, if it still in. falls. And it does. What an effort from way We're out We're on there. a roll Great with work. putting in this match. And after that one, you've brought your score down to three under. Three and birdies in a row. A All right, so let's take a look at this hole. shot. 291 on a straight tailwind like this. So remember, a cross, crosswind, I mean, a head so on a straight headwind i mean so on a tailwind you multiply the number by 0.5 and that's how many yards it's going to carry further on a headwind like this one so it's coming into your face you want to multiply that number by 1.5 so that would be 12 times 1.5 is going to be 18 it in this case it's going to take off 18 yards from 291 so 291 times I mean, minus, minus 18 is 273. So make it easy. Use a calculator, unless you just want to do all the math in your head. You can do that. So 273 is what it's going to carry. Let's look at 273. So if that's 273, let's take a look at the slope. 
that I'm good with this landing spot actually. So if that's 273, that's where it's gonna land. So make sure you always go back to your original spot. I'm good with landing it here. I need you see it's aiming the wind is a crosswind to the left now, so it's gonna aim a take go a little bit to the left. So I'm gonna aim times that by 0 0.5, which is about six. I'm gonna aim about six clicks to the right. And then practice wing fast but I'm okay with fast in this situation beautiful swing and perfect so we were almost right on it carried 274 okay we we're about 205 yeah, this is a tough par here. four this is gonna be a good learning hole because it, it's probably gonna require a percentage shot so let's take a look at uphill first so, in this case, the uphill, 8 feet divided by 3 is basically 3. So, it's going to, the hole is going to play about 204. Or, if you want to think into, I like to think of it as how many yards is each element going to take off. In this case, it's going to take off 3 yards. What about the wind? The wind is basically a straight headwind. So, I'm gonna so it's gonna play really in this case it's not a true straight headwind, but it's gonna play really about 1.4, 1.5. I'm gonna times it by 1.4 because it's not straight headwind. So 1.4 times 13 is gonna take off 18 more yards. So total, based on elevation of wind. 21 yards going to be taken off. So if, if I hit the, tw the 201 3 hybrid, 21 yards is going to be way back on this slope. That's not going to be enough. Even if we do shot shaping, it's not going to be enough. So I'm going to have to hit the 3 wood. So this club, minus 21 yards, is going to land about 209. Now what happens if we land 209? It's going to be off the back of the green. Where do we want to land the ball? Let's take a look at the green. So we have something helping us that it's uphill the whole way. That's going to help out the ball. That's going to help the ball not roll as much. The ball is moved. The whole the green is sloping from left to right. So I do need to aim a little bit to the left. So my goal here. I would like to land about 298. I think that would roll about 9 to 10 yards up next to the hole, especially with the wind fighting against the ball. Let's take a look and see what we need to hit in order to do that. So we want to land 199. In order to do that, we need to take into consideration how much the wind and elevation is going to affect it. To carry it here, I need to add the 21 yards that's going to be taken off to the shot to it. So that we would be aiming at one, 199 plus 21. That would put us at 219. So we need to hit the ball at a percentage around 219. So the next step is to determine the which way the ball is going to go based on the wind to the left or right. In this case, it's going to go to the right because of the way the pointer is facing. It's a crosswind, so I'm going to multiply that by 0.5. I need to aim about seven clicks to the left. Now, let's look at the ball. The are my feet below the ball? So it is a little bit, so it's going to, they are below the ball, it's going to come off a little bit to the left, so I need to aim a few more clicks to the right. Okay, so we have our aim, very important to do a practice swing here. That would have been way off, because we need to hit a percentage shot at 94. Not bad, 89. You may have to do, that was perfect, you may have to do a lot of practice swings on here. And if you don't have the power bar on, 
do a lot of practice swings and get a feel for how far you need to bring the club back in relation to the golfer to get the right percent. Okay, I think I have it down as long as I can stop from doing that fast follow through. Okay, perfect. 97, so we carry that way good. too far. I didn't do the percent enough. Yeah, we're going to land 204, 205. At least we're not off the green. We're still putting. Okay, we're on the green. And this one is from Take a drink 23 of water here. feet. Get ready for this putt. This is a tester here. Can we keep up the birdie streak? That's a good question. So we're sitting at 23 feet downhill 7. So times that by 1.25 is that's one way you can look at it. So 7 times since we're using the calculator, 7 times 1.25 is 8.75. So I need to move it at least 8 feet less. So if we go to Eight feet less that's right here now the next step is to read the green so I'm gonna remember we're aiming at 15 don't forget to move this back at the end okay the ball sitting at a spot that's really not breaking so let's take a look at the first grid the first grids not moving as fast as the second I'm gonna sign the first one or two the second one a three so we're up to five Sign the next one a four. It's moving a little bit quicker. That's a nine. Next one a five. A little bit quicker. Fourteen. So we're at fourteen. The next one about a four. Eighteen. The next one about a three. Twenty-one. The next one a two. Twenty-three. Then a one. Twenty-four. So we need to aim twenty-four clicks. Let's get our distance back to fifteen. Really focus when you're counting there. So let's do the eyeball test. Now, one thing I'm thinking, when I'm looking at this first grid line, the first three grid lines, I think I need to add a few more clicks, especially to the first two. So one, two, okay. Now, I think that's right. Let's do a practice swing. Okay, I think we're ready. Let's hit the putt. So distance was great. I I was right. In, so always do the eye test. I was right that I needed to aim more, even more clicks, and I changed. On the short ones, I just like to hit it a little harder and make sure I make it. So we ended the birdie. Very solid round. I know I went through a lot of material today, a lot of different shot types. Now, don't be overwhelmed. Keep practicing. Keep watching my videos. You will learn the system. It'll get much quicker to where you won't even have to think about it. You'll just be able to get up there, determine the numbers really quick, and then hit the ball. Now, any questions, leave in the comment section below. If you want more videos like this, if this was helpful, let me know below. If you want other tutorials, let me know. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and keep coming back for more content like this and to improve your gamer ability.